Uh, everybody always asks me, um, why does your government do those things they do? So I figured I would get a bunch of people in the room and you can tell everybody why we do what we do and how we do it. So an outline for today's talk, US government structure, we'll talk about the federal government only, the system of checks and balances, and then divided power between the federal and the state, and then constitutions for the US and the UK, how they compare and dissimilar. So the government structure starts out, the laws are created in the legislative branch where there's two houses, the Congress and the Senate. They create the laws and they're passed on to Obama mama in the executive branch. He then vetoes them and then they are, then are handed off to the people who decide they like them or don't, the judicial branch. Oh, slipped. Congress, there are two houses, the Senate, where there's two from each state, six year term, and the House of Reps, which is based on population. And they serve a two year term. Didn't work. Okay, so the legislative two houses ensures that small states have a voice and the populous states have more influence. So every state represented here, there's gonna be two senators from each state, no matter how many people you have. But then North Dakota, which is a very small population, is only gonna have one rep, California's three. Laws are received from the Congress and then the president signs them into law or vetoes. And then Congress can override that veto with a two thirds majority. So this is how the president is kept in check by the legislative branch. And we go on. The executive branch then is in charge of executing the law, making certain that what happens. So you have departments. At the cabinet level, you have war, state education, as an example. And then at the agencies, which are lower, you have the Environmental Protection Agency and other groups along those lines. So the executive branch, this is interesting because we're always conducting wars, is actually authorized to wage war, but only Congress can declare or really start a war. So this is limiting the power of that one person. He just can't decide, I want to invade his country. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> if attacked, or if the, the president can actually declare war, the Congress can come back and say, well, we're gonna cut your funding so you can't continue this war. But that's politically very difficult, so you often get these wars that are very unpopular. And lastly, we have the judicial, which actually serves to interpret the law. So as I mentioned before, I'm only gonna talk about the federal court system. So this is responsible for laws implicitly delegated in the Constitution. So for instance, civil rights. Every man and woman is equal, and that would become under jurisdiction there. The responsibilities of the federal court include disputes between states, and then states and their courts are responsible for anything non-specified in the federal constitution. Didn't work. <laughs> okay, then the federal courts, laws can be challenged by people, states, groups, etc., and the judges are appointed by the president and then approved by the Senate. And they have a life term to reduce public influence. This is a Supreme Court where there's nine Supreme Court justices and they're not wearing anything under the robes. In federal court, the laws will act, or the court case will begin in district courts throughout the country. If you're not happy with the result, then the US Court Circuit of Appeals hears it, and then it goes on to the US Supreme Court. Typically the cases are heard where the law is needed, like abortion or uh, election laws. So federal law is always gonna trump the state law, and this is enforced in the federal courts. For instance, in abortion, Abortion is legal throughout the land, but many states put restrictions on that. If the restrictions go too far, it can be challenged. Also, you have federal versus state. So the Bill of Rights, which you may have heard about, is established for state liberties, and it provides the nation, or the individuals, the right to bear arms and other specific laws along those lines. And that can be, that's a state law. Lastly, is divided power, and this is a system called federalism, and this is kind of what we're responsible for, and ensures a central or distant government doesn't have too much power. The origins date back to the British imperial control over the original colonies. So at divided power, you have the national, which controls all laws for all people, such as banking, and then you have state laws, which are just applied to the state residents, such so as state elections, state laws, and then you have education, things like that, which there's an overlap. You have national standards, which uh, state laws have to comply with. So the division of power today, the Constitution, as it's written, suggests that the central government only has a really small role. But today we have a really large federal government, and this is due to increasing multi-state problems in commerce, which requires a larger government. It leaves for vagueness for interpretation. So this brings me to the comparison with the UK. Does Britain need an actual written down constitution, which you don't have? And I argue, well, you guys don't need it. Your tradition spreads among many institutions, and you also you don't want it, because laws are continually interpreted. And this is a quote that I like. Americans have embraced and idealized, or idealized the notion of fundamental, higher order, immutable law that is somehow superior to politics. 
It is a view that entails rights and trying to the Constitution interpreted by judges. There is this law in the book that's not ri that's written. From this perspective, a Bill of Rights is merely the statement of a political conflict pretending to be a resolution of it. So you guys don't write down your laws because it's what to say we have the right to bear arms. It doesn't matter to write it down because it's just going to be interpreted. So with that, go forth and spread the word. <laughs>